We're taking the sea doo out. Welcome back, Beowulf Nation. It's I'm Beowulf, back at it. Finally, with an RX PX300 video. Uh, the hull is fixed. Let's cross the fingers that nothing happens. Sorry to interrupt the video real quick. I just want to get some uh, little facts straight. Always, when I'm uploading one of these videos, the video could be filmed a week ago, two weeks ago, maybe even longer. I try uploading every other day um, and trying to get in this routine. So sometimes you guys might see a video and it's not as recent as you might think as when it happened. Uh, like the last video you saw Pike, he was got back from the vet. And then actually like a week later when I was editing the video, that's the day Pike uh, had to go back. He got severely sick, had to get his gallbladder out and had to do surgery. So I kind of updated people because I'm like, I actually even waited before uploading that video on to make sure he survived the surgery. Cause I'm thinking like, oh my God, you imagine if I say like, he's uh, having surgery and then he, something bad happened to him. Uh, he's still not out of the woods yet with that. Uh, most uh, getting gallbladder on a dog, most dogs actually die days after the surgery. So cross the fingers, everything's fine. I'm supposed to be picking him up tomorrow. Um, so I wanna give a little update. So uh, before you see this video, uh, it really shows of like, wow. And um, I did get a call back from Reva Racing. And uh, I wanna give you guys a little quick summary. But but when you're watching this video, this video was filmed a week, over a week, I think at least a week and a half before they called me. So uh, that's why I'm just adding this into the fill in the blanks, even though it should be a whole nother video with it. I just wanna add it in there. Also two, um, I think in the video I say this is like 10 days before Christmas and I think what we got uh, Christmas Eve is in basically two days. So it kind of gets you guys an idea of what's going on. Uh, so I did get a call from them, not from the head guy. First, let me state things is they never got a call back from the head, header up person with Reva Racing. It was again, the same uh, sales associate. Um, you know, I kind of told him like, you know, I was real stressed out with Pike, what's going on with his health when they called me. Uh, but I still picked up the phone because I'm, you know, I've been sitting here waiting, what, going on seven, eight weeks. Maybe it's going on eight weeks now or even longer. It's hard. It's just so long. It's unbelievable. Um, and nothing's happened. You know, I, I told you guys in the video, the last video talking about that I was supposed to get a call back from this head guy. Never got a call back. Even messaged the sales associate guy saying, hey, I never got a call from him. He goes, oh, he'll call you, you know, the, it was on a Thursday city, he'll call you on a Monday, then weeks pass, nobody calls. So to be thinking all these videos, if Reva Racing is upset, you guys have had so much time to contact me, try to figure something out, something. You guys can't be all uh, being like how you guys are acting, treating me. Kind of what happened, they called me. Um, I really wasn't in the mind of wanting to talk, but I did talk. And it was kind of like, there were three options that were like, it should have happened no matter what the first week when this incident happened. It was either get another Solus prop, well that's not happening after what's happened with that. Uh, second would be getting a scat track prop. And they said, you know, the ski would run slower running the scat track prop with their tune. I didn't feel like doing that. Third was getting a repitch stock prop. When this video you guys are gonna see, this already happened. So I already knew what the how the ski's gonna run that I didn't agree upon any of those because it's the ski was running with a stock prop with the Reva Racing Stage 2 tune running 80 miles per hour, which you guys will see in the video today. Um, so that's why I was like, well, why would I pull the prop out? And with all the repairs done, why would you pull it all back out and mess around with it if it's running what it's supposed to? To be the reality, you shouldn't be pinging, sitting at the top speed, you know, even if the ski was stock, you shouldn't be sitting there pinging at the top speed at all times. It even says in your guys' owner's manual about the maintenance with the supercharger, if you know, you're running long distance, or if you're, you know, leaving at a top end, and you know, all that stuff where you could have damage with the supercharger. So, um, I didn't agree upon any of those, and, and it was said to me that I had to have a decision that day to go to people head up. I kind of stayed in my mind about some other stuff I was a little frustrated with, and um, it really was an hour conversation It got nowhere. I said, you know, like, I can't give you a decision today. He said, what else would, you know, counter with something you want? I really wasn't in the mood to be thinking of ideas um, with that, because now I got the ski actually working. 
um, but but it's had massive damage, tons of money. It was almost the value of the ski of how much in repairs the ski had to get from running. Stage two kit, running a Solus prop. Or that night is when I uploaded that one video with what was going on because it was already pre-scheduled. It, it's, it's, you know, like <laughs> just because they called me doesn't mean I'm not gonna upload a video of something that happened. I uploaded that video. Obviously, they're not gonna be happy. I'm more unhappy than they are. Um, I stayed all facts in any videos. I'm not doing any of these videos. What happened with the ski to get vi views? Because if I was trying to get views, I would upload it immediately right when it happened the day afterwards. I plan every video out, uh, even when I was upset with how it's treated, which I'm getting out real quick. I didn't immediately upload this video because it was in a routine. And like, I like to think things through before I say stuff because everything is facts. I'm stating what's all happened with the fiasco with the Solus prop exploding. Um, I, they tried calling me. I think the same sales guy tried calling me the following day. That was right when I'm going in to bring Pike in because he had to be back on IVs. And this is trying to figure out when the day they were actually gonna do the surgery on him. What my dog had could kill, would, would kill him no matter what. It, there was a chance of him dying during su surgery. It's him dying even after the surgery. If he didn't pull it out, he would die. I mean, it was like, my dogs are my family. Maybe some people aren't into pets. Well, maybe people have kids. My dogs are my kids. So it's kind of a priority. He called me the second day. Uh, it was phone tag. Basically, I called him back, he called me, and we never even talked the day after I uploaded that video. So the th third day rolled, I gave them waiting to the end of the day, waiting for them to call me because I called them last, waiting for a call back um, from whatever they wanted. And uh, I get on the phone and they won't admit to everything they've done wrong. And it's, I don't like stuff like that. I like people who are honest, and you know, you say something, you gotta back it up. You can't say something even two days before and then change what you said. I mean, I wanna be pinned to the corner why to make a decision right then and there when I've been patiently waiting for weeks and I've never told them, hey, you guys have to do this or that by this day or, or this or else, you know? And that's how I was uh, cornered with that, which was very, uh, I'm upset because I've done a lot to promote Reva Racing. Uh, all these parts I had to pay for, they aren't free, so I have the right to think of opinion. If there's other parts that don't relate with the Solus prop that I think that people should know about, I think I have the right to do a video talking about that. Uh, it's not attacking them, it's, it's, people should know when you're buying a product what you're getting yourself into, good or bad reviews. Hello, come on. Um, when I was on the phone with them, I could obviously hear somebody in the background talking and telling him what to say. Um, and I said, you know, I obviously can hear somebody in the background telling you what to say, you know, like, what's the deal? This person wants to talk, get on the phone. And I said, why am I talking to a sales associate or a performance part sales associate instead of talking to this Mark that's head up with Reva Racing or why isn't the owner getting on the phone with me? I'm kind of confused with that because it's the sales associate. I said, are you running Reva Racing? And I could just keep hearing somebody talking in the background telling him what to say, which is like, it's first, it's unprofessional with doing that. Um, it should be somebody head up handling a business. Hello, come on guys. And then at the end, uh, there are some in the backgrounds laughing and making fun of me. When that happened, I told them to go F themselves and uh, hung up the phone because I'm not gonna deal with being treated like that. Uh, I, I paid for everything, I'm a paying customer. Why would somebody treat like that of a big company like this? Um, it's upsetting and, and just, you know, discouraging of this is the kind of behavior of how they act. Uh, and, and the interesting thing is uh, days, I think two days after that conversation, I did get an email from the owner of Reva Racing wanting to set up a time to talk to figure stuff out, which, uh, yeah, hello, yeah, that'd be nice weeks ago before being treated like um, a piece of you know what on the phone, that's how I've been treated. Um, I haven't emailed him back because I want to kind of give it days to soak in. Uh, I'm really upset at how I've been treated. Uh, obviously I'm gonna email him back, but seeing that the holidays are coming around the corner, it's, I pick up my dog tomorrow and like, I'm grateful that I got, that's the best gift to get my dog back. But if I was uh, the owner of Reva Racing and seeing that that's how uh, employees are treating people on the phone, making fun of them, laughing at them. Uh, I think those people, whoever it was in the background, I even asked who was this person in the background talking, he wouldn't say. Um, 
I think that sales associate and whoever that other person was, if, if I was Reva Racing, I'd be firing them because that's inappropriate of a business to be handled like that. And this is thus why these videos are being made because like, why should somebody be treated like this? Uh, there's a lot of stuff too that people who are affiliated with them and whatnot have told me stuff and I'm gonna keep people's privacy, but if I could tell half the stuff of what other people have told me, you guys would be, your mouth would drop. So that's about it to get about that, roll the video. Uh, just a little update real quick before I get all geared up and get out before it gets too dark. Uh, you've seen the past video where I kind of exposed of all this kind of shadiness and how Reva Racing has not helped me out. They haven't even communicated with me. Uh, to recap, um, it's still running the same same tune. It has the stock prop in there because they wouldn't even help figure anything out with it. There was zero help. They were the ones that convinced me to run the Reva Racing Stage 2 kit. I was concerned before purchasing that I've heard that the Solus props have exploded. They kept in saying that it wouldn't happen. It's an old, old version, which that was full of BS. And that I wasn't the first either with the new prop. So why would somebody lie and say that there is an issue when there already was issues before I purchased it? Kind of, kind of shady in my opinion. Um, so let's see how the thing runs. Let's see if it's even faster not running the Solus prop. Who knows what's all going to happen? I basically got in the water. I got a little chick on a little bit farther in. But I'm going to leave the trailer like this because this is basically how I take it out. Uh, nobody's here uh, except for somebody sleeping in a car up there, which is weird. Myrtle Beach, if you're watching, why are we like this? I know there's people at Myrtle Beach Police that watch the channel. Why is this becoming like people who are like sleeping here like the car has towels over the windows and it's daytime? It's kind of weird, but who cares? Um, let's get out. Let's let it rip. I'm excited, but also what I'm not excited is if it breaks and I'm stuck out here and it's a little cold. Uh, I got all my gear. I actually just picked up these gloves on Amazon. You can find them on my Amazon store at amazon.com slash shop slash I am Beowulf. Uh, this is really thick. Um, these are diving gloves, real thick. than my other ones, it's similar to the material of the wetsuit, but a lot, a lot thicker than what my wetsuit is. Uh, these should keep my hands warm. Uh, see with this bag, fair amount of all this gear that's all scattered. It's just all getting ready and going out. But let's stop chitty chatter. Let me get geared up before it gets too dark because I want to see what happens and I don't want to be stranded out here. All right, time to fire it up. Let's cross our fingers, it works. Oh man. doesn't sink now it's a little bit normal I don't know it just seems maybe it's just so weird after being on a stand-up that I feel no it looks normal I don't know it just felt weird all right so uh, crazy thing is I was reading up uh, that there's over, so there's you know, obviously alligators in South Carolina. Now here, before I get the answer, how many alligators do you think, this was just like a year or two ago what they calculated the DNR. So how many alligators do you think are a total of the state of South Carolina? 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000? What do you guys think? Well, it's 100,000 100, plus alligators in the state oh my gosh it's worth a lot more than i thought it would be man giant uh tugboat coming through we get ahead of these people um but also too i was researching in savannah georgia this guy was swimming off his dock in fresh water and must have done a more normal morning swim and a bull shark just this past year uh bit him in the arm swimming right in front of his dock Man, I look at all this and I'm like, whoa! All right, so finally passed this fiasco of uh, Miami, Florida.
nice to be back out here with this thing. I'm pretty much almost in the same spot where I broke down last time. <laughs> it's kind of weird. I hope nothing happens. Uh, it's gonna get a little brisk with the sun going down. Tomorrow it's supposed to be like 71. So I'm gonna take out this Kawasaki SXR 1500 stand up. Be a little bit warmer than today. But man, I'll tell you, after riding both, it just feels weird being in a sit down one after being the last being I was in a stand up. Um, I'm shocked that this thing is like working. Um, to me, I don't care about what the top speed is on it. I just care that I can make fast turns and rip it around. To me, that's what's more fun about this machine with a grippy seat than always about top end because anybody would know the more you go up faster, you know, you could have issues. And also too, if I wasn't such a chase of trying to be the fastest top speed, I never would have been in this whole mess with it. Uh, but just to rehash, if you haven't seen the video where I talked about everything, I did my own digging and found out that Solus doesn't make their own props. They're a Taiwan company, but they hire a company in China to make them. So they don't even make their own props. So. Um, that's facts. That's not make-believe. That's reality. The crazy thing too is even when you go on Riva Racing's website, you can't even write a review on the Solus prop. They have it disabled. But everything else you can leave a review. Kind of suspicious when you see stuff like that, you know? Nobody can write a comment, review, other products you can. Kind of, kind of, kind of weird. Uh, and the other thing too is Solus doesn't even have a number you can contact them. And I wish I kind of knew all that before purchasing the prop from Reaper Racing with running their Stage 2 kit. Because I never would have bought the prop if I wasn't running their Stage 2 kit. And to be honest, I don't think any of my viewers, you know, if you really think you want to have be the, the fastest top speed, I don't, I don't, I would highly recommend not replacing the prop at all. Like before when I bought the prop, I was like, well, should I get the scat track? And they come and go and I had how many problems there are, but yet they sell both. Um, so that's just my viewers, don't risk it. Just leave the stock prop in, you know? It's like, you, you have, like I said, you'd have more fun spending some money on some handling stuff, like a better, you know, matters what model, like a ride plate or intake rate or sponsons or like this really grippy, grippy seat. You find more fun of improving your riding off of that and you know just remember is you know everything you do to try and make it faster your fuel mileage goes down especially on a cd where they already got these 300s are a joke with their fuel mileage stock and uh you know like you can put like a little exhaust or like an intake and, uh man look at this boat's coming down ripping down the, the water um but you always want to do too is when you got a warranty take buy parts that are easy to take out man holy cow that guy's falling down Well, it's probably easy doing like a hundred something. Holy cow. Let's see if we can catch up to this. Let's see if we can catch up to this dude.
never catching that guy. Holy cow, man. So he's already doing probably 100 plus. And he's just gone. I can't even see him with the glare of the sun. Oh. And I tell you, it's when you're out here, you never know who's out here. And uh, it's kind of nice when it's uh, kind of the winter time, how there's not as many people out. But a lot of people still, a lot of people still keep their boats all out. But uh, not a lot of people jet skiing in this cold weather. I mean, it's, it's probably like six, probably hitting the high 50s right now. The good thing is my hands are staying really warm. I mean, I could kind of feel the cold going fast because I think I got a, a tad wet, but nothing like before. I couldn't even hold the handlebars. I mean, I could feel like a little, like not much coldness, but I mean, you can feel a little bit, but that's typical if you're going so fast, doing over 70. I wish I could have caught that boat. That would have been epic. <laughs> What I'm probably guessing now is they're gonna just be building homes all right up and down here. That's what it looks like. Cause before it was way down and now they're kind of building that edge. Similar to like how that was built there. It's what they're starting to build here. And it's probably no doubt that there's gonna be homes being built similar to like those, like that all over here. It's crazy just how much expansion is going on out here. without running the solace prop what a joke what a joke of paying all this money for stuff that like, you really don't need and here it's hitting 80 miles per hour and it need the solace prop what a, i'm telling you guys right there what a deceit deceiving practice that you have to buy all this stuff from them that you all oh, that to run our tune you need this prop you need this and need that and look the thing just got up to 80 miles per hour on the stock prop so any of my viewers that think you know you have to buy the stage two kit with the solace prop what a joke seriously that what a joke i remember before buying it and i was just like well what about running the tune oh no you'll never get up to that speed with the tune the tune's only made for the solace prop yeah put it in so you wreck your ski man i i am just glad the thing's running faster now yeah, I'm just glad to be out on the ski. I'm telling you guys right now, with everything that's all happened and the fiasco, and it, I never thought the ski was gonna run again, and then the hall cracked from the prop exploding, everything. And the ski has resurrected as the Phoenix to rise again. <laughs> the sun in the back, it rises again to fight another day, <laughs> but it's still here. I'm so glad. All right, well, let's have some fun with this before it gets too dark.
you guys there's some new merch coming out and this is the one I was telling you about it's in yellow too uh, but it's purple kind of had the theme of what the seat is um, with my RXPX and I got another one where it's reversed and then the X is purple and uh, it's cool matching stuff you don't have to have the same color seat but it, it looks cool it stands out and it keeps you keeps you cool uh, in the summertime and it's nice too when it's like cold out like now that I put this on and it's it's real nice is the polyester it's real good kind of material for the summer and the fall winter technically here it's kind of warmed me up uh, and it keeps you cool and then especially too you got tattoos and stuff you don't want to be putting suntan lotion all the time you throw this on it protects you and you can find all that at iambaywolf.com that stuff should be launching after the uh, first of the year is one I plan on doing it and then also too I'll be doing a discount before well, Christmas is less than 10 days away which who knows when the video is up um, but I'm doing going to be doing a discount on all the RXTX merch at iambaywolf.com uh, there's also a giveaway going on so let me talk about that because by the time I get home it's going to be too much uh, I'm doing a November and December giveaway combined. If you're new to the channel, uh, hit the subscribe button to be entered to win. So you just have to be subscribed, like the videos, comment on the videos. How, um, what the giveaway is, is I have a signed Michael Jordan photograph and the other giveaway item is a size large Jet Tribe black, red and black sharpened uh, two-piece wetsuit. Um, awesome gear. Thank you Jet Tribe for donating that. Check them out too if you're looking for anything because I know they're doing some crazy sales on and off. Uh, JetTribe.com. They're cool gear, and I'm not being paid to say that. I'm telling you from experience of stuff I own, they're the best stuff out there for riding gear. Uh, man, it is just good to be on this thing. I mean, what I'm just really frustrated with the whole deal, and to be continuously let on that somebody's going to call me and then nobody does, and they haven't done anything. I mean, it's just glad that I got this thing working. But I still think Reva Racing, you know, they're they're at fault with this because it's what they're selling and they're still selling them. Even when people call on the phone, people told me that they said that they've had issues, but they're still selling it online. And But when somebody calls, they're trying to divert somebody from buying it. And if you look at past videos relating with this, people that had Yamahas that have had Solus props exploded, it doesn't matter what brand it is. If you're running the Solus prop, it's junk. <laughs> I'm just confused. You know, you try to sell mods and you're claiming you need to have this whole stuff, which I give them credit for putting kits together. But, you know, they're not the only people selling uh, Solus props. My big thing is because you can't get a hold of Solus on the phone. Is there a main distributor that sells the Solus props? Could Reva Racing be the main distributor? I don't know. And I'm not going to make a claim that they are or not without physically knowing. But when you go on there and Solus' site, you can't contact somebody. But you put in your zip, you can find all these people selling it. So all these people, if I can't call them, you can't call them, how are all these people being set up selling it? So there has to be somebody who's set up here in the United States that is their main distributor for it. Could it be Reva Racing? I don't know. We should dig more into that trying to find it. I mean, if they are, I mean, that even makes the whole matter even worse. Uh, it, maybe I should call one of these companies that are listed as a dealer and probably ask them where they're getting it from and who they deal with and that better fits of figuring this all out to uh, give you another video figuring out the big clue um, but it's awesome I'm glad this thing's running good if you didn't remember too uh, this had a lot of stuff wrong with it and man what is it eight weeks eight nine weeks it's finally back out I actually really like I said earlier I never thought this thing was gonna ride again um, and I'm glad it, it rides and I seem to be that I think it's running a lot better um, it feels different a lot different uh, and it's, it's a lot different that it's better than it was with having that Solus prop um, it, it seems to, to climb up really good up to the top RPM the engine seems to be running good which I'm, I'm really happy with that I will be changing out the oil again just to make sure everything's like tip top shape with it um, but yeah the CDU is back in the channel and, and I'm glad to have it there and I'm glad to have to you guys get to see like CDU Yamaha obviously the Kawasaki is back at home um, and there's like a wrap thing I'm gonna be working on with the GP to kind of freshen it up 
and I'm doing a custom seat with that is what my plan is through uh, jet trim and then doing a custom tray or whatever you consider with a stand-up with the Kawasaki is coming soon too because I think that'll really help uh, the, the thing when I was in the if you saw the video where I'm riding a Kawasaki you lean and it's like this and both of these kind of do that same thing weight transfer but not as bad um, that maybe by re putting a better tray in there might be better I was also looking online and seeing um, a different ride plate and sponsons for that and an interesting thing with that ski is you know those take skill to ride one of these like especially the Kawasaki SXR 1500 and it's interesting when I'm going on some of these places where people are posting stuff and they say they buy you know this ride plate or these sponsons and the thing rode even worse and they went back to another brand and it's really what I'm trying to get at with that shows that you know just because a company's selling something doesn't mean the stuff is good um, there's you know sometimes you might buy a you think you're buying a name and maybe it's not what you think it is uh, and it could be a, a bad mistake doing a mod and it's the same with cars I mean there's a lot of stuff you wouldn't want to do like this it's cool to be to put a Whipple supercharger in it and it sound cool would it be practical for what I'm all doing probably not because if it had more of a chance of it breaking down um, that's what I've kind of seen with people doing that and that's kind of you know kind of you you pick and choose little things like when I modded my Hellcat I didn't do a crazy stuff basic stuff really easy to pull out and I when you if you want to sell it or if there comes a warranty thing which is crazy the warranty doesn't affect all these cars when you modify it. I mean I lowered this thing did a bunch of a lot of suspension components replaced through B Woody and because it's a lot lower than what it is and it's interesting because when I was just back in Illinois uh, I should have filmed it but my dad has a Durango SRT and the Durango SRT sat lower than the Jeep. And now it sits about the same. And it was kind of interesting because I had to hear all his stuff. He's like, oh, why are you lowering it? Because it has to go, it goes deeper in the back with the water. But it keeps a good, pretty good line with the trailer being straight. That's what I had to say what's good with lowering it. Um, but just think before when you buy something because you don't want to get it wrecked. And I'm looking like I'm running out of light now, which I'm like, it's, it's nice that it's getting lighter. I think after the first year it starts getting lighter sooner and I just want that warm weather back but the biggest thing I have to be figuring out when I come here with a Kawasaki SXR 1500 how the heck am I gonna tie this up I can't be doing this once it gets into the season of like leaving the trailer here and this is like a dangerous spot of how high it is but I don't know if it's gonna be something where I come out when there's tons of people in the water because it might be difficult to ride I don't know uh, but it's the end of the video and, and stay tuned because there's going to be different monthly giveaways and you don't have to keep on like I've said in a past video you don't have to keep on resubscribing desubscribing and resubscribing stay subscribed like the videos comment the videos and then you're always knowing you're entered into a giveaway all the time if you're already a subscriber and also to hit that bell notification because I'll tell you if you don't hit that bell notification you won't be notified as soon as an upload is uploaded you it, they have YouTube's kind of goofy of how things show up so just make sure you guys do that remember every day is Earth Day the crazy thing is a day I can go out there and I can pick up trash I don't see anything which is actually a really really good thing but remember every day is Earth Day you see some trash doesn't matter where it is pick it up make a difference be driven to win we're almost to 2020 it's hard to believe I feel like I just started telling everybody to put goals for 2019. I put goals and some of them I've succeeded in for 2019, which I'm happy. Also too, I'm trying to get up to 10,000 subscribers. Once I hit 10,000 subscribers, I'm gonna do the same as like the other giveaways. Gonna give an Xbox One X or a PlayStation 4 Pro away to a subscriber. Man, the lights are turning on, awesome. Um, so stay tuned to that. Make sure you guys spread it with your friends. Tell them to hit the subscribe button and start liking and commenting on the videos. It is end of the video. I am Beowulf. Peace out, Beowulf Nation.